Hey Porsche fans, Daniel here. Welcome to the channel. My 718 GT4 has seen quite a few track days and the OEM rotors are just about toast. So I'm really excited to be finally upgrading to some two-piece slotted rotors. And in this video, we're introducing a new product from Paragon Performance. These two-piece slotted rotors are just a little more expensive than OEM and quite a bit cheaper than some of the other two-piece slotted rotors available. However, they do come with one important compromise you need to be aware of, but I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about these rotors and I'm going to show you how to install them on my GT4, so keep watching. All right, I know what you're thinking. As a Porsche owner, you're like, I've never heard of Paragon brakes. And there's a good reason for that, folks. Although Paragon has been around for nearly a decade, they only recently started making Porsche brakes. If you're in the BMW or Honda community, or maybe even the Tesla community, you might have heard their name by now. But they do make brake parts for all of these makes and models. They even have full-on big brake kits. If I had a 981 Porsche Spyder, I would definitely be jumping on this big brake kit from Paragon using Alcon calipers, the rotors, and Winmax pads. They do have pads available for most cars from street to track, all made by Winmax Japan. Their brake technologies have been tested and proven at the racetrack. Working with Team Honda Research West in Civic Type R's, they competed in the 25 hours of Thunder Hill, where the two cars came in fourth and seventh. This kind of research and testing on the racetrack is great because it allows them to gather data to improve the products they sell to the consumer. Now, before I get into the details of these rotors, I do want to tell you that Paragon provided these rotors for this video, which is lucky for me because my rotors were done and I was going to be doing a slotted two-piece upgrade anyway. But they didn't tell me what to say. I'm not getting paid for this video. And unfortunately, I don't get any commissions off the sales of these rotors, whether you decide to buy them or not. Paragon is just excited to share with the Porsche community that they now have rotors available and this channel is a great avenue. And of course, I'm happy to try them out and give you folks my unbiased review. So now let's go to the workbench and take a closer look at these things. These are the Paragon Performance slotted two-piece rotors for your GT4. They make rotors for many Porsches. These specific ones are good on the 981, the 718, and also the 991 Turbo and Turbo S 911s. And those slots are a preferred surface over any cross-drilled rotor, especially when you're using your rotor for track use. The rotor hats are made from CNC machined 6061 T6 aluminum, and the rotors are CM250 high carbon alloy cast iron. The OEM rotors already have a unique design that makes them very similar to a two-piece rotor, but they don't give you all the true advantages that a two-piece has. The true two-piece design has a separate hat from a floating ring here. And on the back side, you're gonna see how the hat and ring are attached, and there's actually oval holes where all these bolts are. Those ovals are gonna provide a space for the ring to expand radially away from the rotor hat. The other good thing is the ring is a little more separate from the hat, which means less heat transfer into your suspension components. The other great thing about a two-piece design is when it's time to replace your rotors, you don't have to buy this whole thing. You can just buy the outer ring and save a great amount of money. Now, of course, these aren't the only two-piece rotors out there available for your Porsche. A lot of my friends run some other brands that I was actually looking forward to trying out, but I'm happy to be testing out these new Paragon rotors. Like I said earlier, these are much cheaper than some of the other two-piece slotted options available out there. In some cases, 20 to 30% less. And that cost savings also applies when you replace just the rotor ring. You can pick up a pair of Paragon rotors for your GT4 for $1,350 or do the whole car at $2,700. And then when it's time to replace just those rings, they're 775 per pair. Now compare that to some of the other comparable two-piece rotors out there. Those would be more like a thousand for a pair of rings. Now, one thing Porsche owners love to focus on is weight. They want to save a few grams here, maybe a few pounds here. I get it. And that's where the compromise is with these rotors. Unfortunately, these rotors come in at 27 pounds each. OEM rotors are only 24 pounds. 
I had an opportunity to compare these Paragon slotted rotors with some 991 GT3 rotors from the more expensive brand. Side by side, there was a difference. First of all, the more expensive rotor came in at the same weight as OEM. Apparently it's tough to make these any lighter, but the Paragon rotors were heavier. The veins on the Paragon may be a little bit thicker, maybe that's what contributes to the extra weight. The Paragon, the OEM, and the other rotors I looked at all had the same maximum and minimum thickness. Paragon Performance says that the extra weight means better thermal capacity. The extra mass can absorb and dissipate heat better, which could mean better performance and longevity. I think in the end, you need to look at the weight, the price, as well as the performance and make your own decision. At some point, there may be a bit of diminishing returns. The other thing I noticed was the final finishing after the casting process isn't quite as clean and nice on the Paragon rotors. Now, had I not seen them side by side, I might not have noticed this. All these same elements apply to the rear rotors as well. What's unique about the rear rotors is it's actually three pieces. There's a hat, a ring, and then there's another part that goes under the rotor, and that is for your parking brake drum. On the OEM rotors, that parking brake drum is fully incorporated right in the rotor. Lastly, I did notice that the Paragon rotors have the straight slots, while many other brands have moved to the curved slots. I don't know how much of a big difference that's going to make, but I'll do an update maybe in a year or so, whenever these rotors have run out, to give you my final opinion on how well these rotors held up, because longevity is important as well. It doesn't matter if you're paying less for a rotor if it doesn't last as long. But I have a feeling they're gonna do just fine. Next in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how to install these rotors on your Porsche in case you've never done that before. Now here on the GT4, as well as a number of other Porsches, the brake caliper design and the brake line brackets, uh, they have some issues that you need to be aware of. And I made a whole video about that to make sure that you can remove the caliper and the brake lines safely without causing some expensive damage to your Porsche. So be sure to check out that video. I'll have a link up here and one in the description, of course. But I'll quickly step you through the removal of the caliper to get down to the rotor. The other thing I'm doing today that I will show in another video is installing the Terret caliper stud kit and the brake line bracket stud kit, which is gonna save you from making those expensive mistakes when working with these brakes. So be sure to check out that video because I think it's a must have upgrade for anybody that changes their brake pads often. I've actually already done the driver's side of the car, so we're gonna go ahead and do the passenger side now. We're gonna jack it up, remove the wheels, and install those Paragon Performance Rotors. Let's get started. Anytime you're working on the brakes, be sure to first open up your reservoir. Uh, this will allow you to move the fluid when needed to push the pads back. And we'll start here on the front. With the GT4 and the 991 GT3s, the first thing you need to do is loosen the brake line bracket. There's a 10 millimeter bolt there and one over on the other side of the knuckle. Once those are off, it allows a lot more freedom of those brake lines and it's the only way that you're gonna allow that caliper to move off the rotor. The rear also has 10 millimeter bolts, but they're on the top section here. Consider putting a bucket nearby so you can rest the caliper there. A hook may be helpful, but it is a little awkward hanging this caliper. I'll use my method of gently prying back the pads, easiest way in my opinion, while it's still on the car. Next, remove your two 10 millimeter internal hex or Allen key bolts that hold the caliper on. But remember, once these bolts are out, the caliper is free to slide down, so be ready to catch it and set it down on your bucket or hang it if you have a way to do so. As you move the caliper, be sure that any movement is being flexed on the soft brake lines and not the hard ones. It's essentially the same process in the rear, but these are T55 Torx bolts instead. To push that pads, I usually just use my fingers here on these parts. Remember, this is just an abbreviated procedure. You want to check out my other video for important details. Now on to the rotors. There are two T30 Torx screws holding the rotor to the hub. You can use a regular ratchet, but it's hard to hold it while holding the rotor and getting enough uh, turn out of it. So I do recommend an impact driver to pop them out. This is especially useful if these are held on with a little bit of corrosion or rust. Once those screws are out, the rotor does just fall off, so be ready to catch it unless you've installed your wheel guides like I did here for the rear rotor. This is a good idea. So same thing on the rear, remove your T30 torque screws and then slide the rotor off. However, on the back, you gotta make sure 
that your parking brake is not set, otherwise this rotor is not coming off. You can see the parking brake pads there. This is a great opportunity to clean up the hub area since you got everything off. Next, we'll install our new Paragon rotors. I'll put those wheel guides here on the front hub. And installing these is no different than any other car. You just slide the rotor in place, make sure the bolt holes line up with the hub, and install your two T30 screws. There's no reason to make them very tight. They won't fall out because the wheel will be mounted on there, and it's the wheel that holds the brake rotor to the hub more than anything. But these are helpful, and they're to be tightened to only about seven and a half pound feet of torque or 10 Newton meters. For the rear rotor, we start with this piece, which is the parking brake drum. Make sure you align the holes, slide it on over your parking brake. It should fit over the brake without too much resistance, and it shouldn't be dragging the brake when you drive it. Next, slide on your rotor and secure it with those T30 screws. Okay, let's reassemble. You can see I've got those new Terret studs on, so my caliper just slides over those studs. This is way easier to do, and the caliper's not going anywhere, so I don't have to hang on to it right now before I put the nuts on. Same thing for the rear. However, I found the rear a little tighter with the studs there, so I had to remove this one screw to give me a little more play. Whether you have the Terret kit or the OEM bolts, torque them down to about 54 foot-pounds, and then reinstall the fasteners to the brake line bracket. Uh, if you have the Terret kit, this is really easy and they only call for five foot-pounds, so just secure is all you need. Then close up the brake reservoir and pressurize the brake system. Be sure to start the car, test it out, and when you're ready to test your brakes, get going slowly in case there's any issues. Put everything away and you are done. Alright guys, it's been a few weeks since I've installed these rotors and since then of course I did the proper bed-in procedure. Be sure to follow Paragon's bed-in procedure included with the rotors and if you have another manufacturer's pads, maybe consider those bed-in procedures as well, but they should be pretty much the same. You saw me install that Terret stud kit. Those are a game changer. Whether you're changing your rotors or not, I highly suggest that mod and check out my other video where I install those. Now I fully intended on closing out this video with my initial track experience with these rotors. Uh, unfortunately, the one track day I was able to sign up for during the slower winter season here in California, um, there was rain. I don't mind a wet track, but I was gonna have to drive for four hours at night in torrential downpours on track tires. Sorry folks, I have to draw the line somewhere. But when I do get out to the track, which is probably not gonna be for a few months, unfortunately, I will bring you a video and let you know how the rotors are holding up. And when that video is available, you're gonna spot it right here where these videos are. But in the meantime, be sure to check out those videos. They're pretty good too. Also, check out Paragon's website. Maybe they have something you wanna put on your car. If you like this video, be sure to like, subscribe, consider hitting the bell to be notified of future Porsche content. Thanks so much for watching the Jeff Yoli channel. We'll see you next time.